Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today you're really in for a treat because we're going to be working with a purple sweet potato called an ube. Ube is really hot right now, really trendy. And I came up with a giant ube brioche bun that you are going to be amazed at. Forget cinnamon rolls for the holidays. This is going to be your go-to for brunch. Now, before we get started, I'd like you to click that notification button because I don't want you to miss any of my tips or videos because they're really, really good. And I have a lot of them. So ube. Ube is this purple sweet potato. It's sort of the color of my, my shirt and it comes from the Philippines. It's super incredible. We're going to be using an ube jam called um, Halea and you can get it online. That's where I got mine and maybe some specialty grocery stores, but it is amazing. It's sort of a cross between sort of citrusy taste and vanilla and it's just subtle and it's divine and it gives this beautiful purple color. Now we're going to make our brioche dough. Our brioche dough is one of the richest yeast doughs you can make. Super easy and very rich, full of eggs and butter. And I'm putting a little coconut milk in this just to carry that Philippine theme uh, and, and get in with the ube. So in an electric mixing bowl, and I'm going to make sure of my ingredients with my recipe here, is three and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour. I'm going to add, because I'm going to whisk this together because I never like the way my paddle uh, you know, mixes everything, and you know that I'm always using a whisk. One quarter cup of granulated sugar, two tablespoons of non-fat dry milk powder. All right, That helps keeping everything uh, moist, um, and you're not using real milk, but you're using uh, non-fat milk. I mean, it's dry, but it's actually going to give a little moistness and just just give that little something extra. One and a half uh, teaspoons, one and a half teaspoons of salt, just to balance out the sweetness. And my yeast, I made this several times before I really came up with this perfect version. And the yeast was key. So I have one tablespoon plus half a teaspoon of instant active, and that means it's fast rising. So you want to get the fast rising type in the grocery store. When I had too much yeast, my bun got real big, like too big. So I had to adjust a little bit. So I'm going to whisk all my dry ingredients together. Make sure you get that yeast mixed in, the salt, the sugar, everything should be mixed in really, really homogeneously. Now I'm going to get rid of my whisk and I'm going to put it on my motor. And I'm going to start adding uh, some wet ingredients. And I have my dough hook. So what I'm going to be doing now is adding eight tablespoons of coconut milk. All right. And I can put this uh, on a low speed and get it going. I started out adding this with my paddle. And you know what? I liked the dough hook better, so I'm going to add my coconut milk, eight tablespoons. I'm going to add four large eggs, whole eggs, four. This is a very rich dough, I want to tell you that. It's amazing. It's awesome. And then I have a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract and a teaspoon of coconut extract, just to give that flavor, that beautiful flavor into the dough. And then I'm going to add four tablespoons of, it's not cold, it's not hot, just lukewarm, tepid water. All right, I'm going to add that in. And I'm going to let that dough hook do its thing. In the wings, our star of the show, because this is very typical of a lot of brioche, it's one and a half sticks of unsalted butter. It's neither room temperature, nor is it ice cold. So I took it out of the fridge maybe 30 minutes ago and just let it sit at room temperature and cut it up into like tablespoons, little chunks. So we'll get that in there. And I want to see, I want to show you that this is, this dough is beautiful. And for a typical brioche, you put the butter in last. It seems counterproductive, but you put the butter in last and it gets 
it almost feels like you're feeling something silky, like the dough feels silky. Now I can hear it bashing around in there and it's doing everything it should. I'm going to show you. So when I hold it up, see what it looks like? It's sort of sticking, it's wet. Uh, the butter is going to make it a little softer. And oh, it smells so good. I can actually smell the extracts. I can smell the coconut milk and I actually can. Um, I got a good sniffer. I can really smell. When you bake as much as I do, you really, you really can um, smell everything that you make. And if you have to, you can actually just take your dough and flip it around in the bowl so you're going to get every single dry ingredient in there. All right. So get, let that go for a bit. And I'm not going to over knead this dough. We just want to get everything in. But I do have my bowl scraper because this is a soft dough. And it's going around and around. It's got all the dry ingredients incorporated now. So now I'm going to take some butter and I'm just going to stick it in. again. I can push down on it, but it's not room temperature. I'm going to put in about a tablespoon or two at a time and let it incorporate. And it actually, if you've ever made brioche, it has this yellow color from the butter and it's silky. It feels like silk. It feels satiny. It feels beautiful. So I'm going to keep adding this little at a time. And you may see a little bit of clumps in there. Don't worry about it. It's all going to go in there. It's all going to get incorporated. Trust me. This is so good. So fabulous. And sometimes I give my, my baked goods away. I can't give this one away. My family's like, uh-uh, this is ours because it's so amazing. So I'm going to keep adding my butter. Got a little bit to go. You really want it incorporated. And if you don't have a bowl scraper to get all your dough out of the bowl, you can easily use a rubber spatula. No problem. But I am getting my hands in it. You'll see. I already have. That's what I do. I get my hands in everything. Because you really want to feel what you're making. That's how you know it's right. Now this dough is not going to rise as high as a normal yeast dough like a white bread or even a challah bread which has eggs in it but no butter. It has oil in it. So challah is a rich yeast dough. Brioche is the richest yeast dough that you can make. So I'm just going to get that going a little bit. I'm going to put it on high to get everything in. And it has loosened up the dough a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about it. You can see it's sort of, sort of like that, just the way a brioche dough should be. And I'm going to move it out of here and bring it over to you. And I have a bowl. I have a glass bowl ready, sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. But you can see it's very sticky. I don't want to add any flour to it. And we're going to allow it to rise for about an hour in a warm room temperature, room temperature place. I wouldn't put it in a, in a, a really super hot place because you don't want to melt the butter. But you can see there's little bits of butter in there and clumps of butter. But it's sticky and it's silky and it's really difficult to work with, but it's so worth it. When I first made this, I said, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if my subscribers are going to like this. You're going to love it. Oh my God, you're going to love it. If you don't try this, oh, take my advice. You see how it has that, you just go like this and you just have that silky beautifulness. So I'm going to flip it right into my my glass bowl that I have sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. I'll bring it over. I'm a little messy, but I'll bring it over. And I want to get every bit. So I'm going to go in here and get every bit in. Okay. 
every bit of this goodness here into this bowl. And I'm just gonna flip it over once, okay? I see my butter in there, I'm just gonna move it in, move it around so it's inside the dough, okay? And then I'm gonna flip this dough over, okay? There you have it. So the grease side is up. I am going to cover it with a piece of plastic wrap and I'm gonna put it in a warm place, room temperature, not too warm, like a closet, even on my cooktop for about an hour. And then because it's such a soft dough and so rich and gorgeous, I need to put it in the refrigerator to make it a little bit easier to work with. So you're gonna put it in the refrigerator after it raises for one hour, after it rises for one hour, put it in your fridge for a couple hours. You could even put it in overnight if you want to, but I just leave it for a few hours, go do something else, and then you're ready to shape. I'll see you back. So my ube brioche dough has risen such as it is. It doesn't rise as much. Remember, any yeasted dough that's loaded with butter uh, and a lot of eggs and fatty ingredients is not gonna rise as much as a regular white bread dough or even a hollow dough. So that's fine. And it may have a few chunks of butter in it. Don't worry about it. So I have divided it in half. And just so you don't have to see me rolling it out, I rolled out uh, each half into a 9 by 13 inch rectangle. And I put one on a, uh, on a sheet pan covered with wax paper. And we're going to take that one and put this one on top in a second. But first, we have to build our delicious filling. So again, this is an ube filling. So this is ube jam, which I got online, like I said before. And look how pretty, look, it matches my, my sweater. And it is scrumptious. It's got this sort of, um, I don't know, like lemony, coconutty flavor. It's just amazing. It doesn't taste like a yam or a sweet potato. It's completely like nothing you've ever had. And then online, where, wherever you get your extracts, you can order this online, ube extract. So I have one and a half teaspoons of ube extract, but be aware, whatever you put it in will turn this color, which is amazing. Where do you see this bun? So I'm also mixing in two tablespoons of coconut milk. Again, we're, we're going with our theme, our sort of our Philippine delicious uh, themed ube brioche bun. And I forgot the word giant, because it is gonna be giant. So what I've done is I'm gonna mix this up. Okay, I'm gonna mix this filling up as best you can. Get everything in there, get all the coconut milk in there. And I'm going to take half of it, and I'm going to spread it with an offset spatula on one surface of this, uh, this brioche dough, all right? So I'm gonna put it everywhere. So I really want it to go everywhere. So I'm splitting it in half, okay? And I wanna save half for the other side. I don't wanna be skimpy because this is what you're gonna have as your filling. So I'm just gonna spread it and it will be thin. You want it thin because if it's too thick, it's, you're not gonna be able to form this giant, uh, beautiful ube brioche bun. So take your time, and if you see you get some on the side, watch. Just take it, that's why the offset is great, and then just scrape it up. It's almost like you're spackling. So I, I always say, whenever I have a handyman in my house, and if they're spackling, or doing anything on the wall like that, I always say, you are a natural spreader and froster, you should bake. <laughs> because if they do that good a job, you know they're gonna be really, really good in the kitchen. All right, true. I always say that to people that come to my house and they're like, lady, I don't like to bake. I'm like, but you're a natural, you really should be frosting cakes. What are you wasting your life doing this for? But we need good spacklers, we need good people. So, all right, so again, it looks thin, but this is exactly what I'm looking for. 
Again, you got a little bit on the edge, and I may need just a tad more to get, get this fully covered. And you want to go from the beginning to the end. You don't want to leave no edges uncovered. So go as far as you can, okay? And again, it may be a little thin. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. This is so amazing. You are going to make this for your holiday brunch. Whatever you celebrate, you're going to want this for a brunch, holiday or otherwise. It's like so cool. And it will be the talk of your get together. It will be the talk of your, everyone will want to say, what is this? This is amazing. And it tastes so good. Wonderful. All right. So now, I'm going to put this one on top of here. So this is what gets a little dicey. I have rolled this out again. It's a very silky dough. So I have this wax paper, but I am going to lift it up. All right. If you can't lift it up, you can flip it over. But I usually just lift it. All right. Just put it on your hands. Make sure you flip it over. I just want to loosen it a little. I didn't put a lot of flour underneath because I didn't want a lot of flour. Okay. Woo! I got it. Oh, to be an octopus. You know what? I'm going to flip it. I'm going to flip it over. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm going to flip it over. So this happens in the real world. It happens to chefs. It happens to everybody. So when I made this, it did not happen to me, but it's not as, uh, okay, here we go. All right, so now I'm just going to lift it up and move it over. Just move your dough over so it, I'm just going to stretch it a little. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. All is fine. All is well. All is well. Just get as much as you can over it. Okay, and now I'm going to put more ube on top. All the rest of the ube on top. See if I get any on my blouse. Who cares? No one can see it. It's perfect. All right. So now you're going to spread. So you're going to have your dough, ube, dough, ube. Sounds like a really cool song. Dough, ube, dough, ube. And then we're going to fit it into a 10-inch springform pan, like the type you'd make a cheesecake. So I've sprayed a 10-inch springform with nonstick cooking spray. I lined it with a parchment paper. And then I sprayed it again. So I have that. Okay. We're going to get the rest of this covered. And you will need all this ube. Don't use extra ube because it will get, it'll be too much. Okay, it'll be too much. But again, smear as much as you can. Smear with an offset. If all you have is a butter knife, just do it very carefully because you don't want to get into your dough. You don't want to dig into your dough. That's why offsets are so great. All right. So go all the way to the edge if you can. All the way to the edge. Get it as even as you can. If you see a little dot of coconut milk, sometimes the fat in the coconut milk will show through. No worries. Don't worry about it. All right. Pizza wheel. All right. So now we are cutting down the length about halfway down the length, all right? So um, this is supposed to be about nine. Just go about, the, right now, because I've stretched it out a little bit, it's probably about, let's see, let's do about five and a half. Just go straight down. Doesn't have to be perfect, it just, you want half. So if you've stretched it out a little bit, don't worry about it. And then we want three. So divide each half into thirds. 
all right, and just eyeballing it. Eyeballing it is fine, just cut right through. Do it again. Straight as you can, do it again. All right, so you should have six pieces. All right, now let the fun begin. So here is my 10 inch spring form pan. And what I'm going to do is take one of my pieces, it doesn't matter which, and I'm going to roll it up. Okay, you see I have this one? I'm going to roll it up like I would a cinnamon roll, real tight. Just roll it up. Roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. Look how pretty that looks. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh, oh gorgeous, gorgeous. And you're going to put it right in the middle. Right in the middle, okay? You can see that right in the middle. Now, the remainder of these you're going to cut crosswise, all right? Crosswise, crosswise, okay? Crosswise. Now, what are you going to do is you're going to take each half and lay it against this and just go around, all right? So you're building coils. Just keep going around and around. Just keep going around and around. Okay? It's so beautiful. And I know how this is going to turn out. Try to get it as like swirly as possible so each swirl sort of matches. And if it doesn't match perfectly, you can see it will, when it all rises, it will be beautiful. So you're just going to go all the way around. So if you have a seam, just cover it with the next, the next piece, okay? See how pretty that looks? And you're just going to keep going around it. And you're going to get this gigundo, gigundo cinnamon bun. But it's not a cinnamon bun is ube. All right, so I'm going to keep doing it and doing it. All right, keep going. And take your time with this. Don't rush it. And as you get to the edges, you want to make sure you maintain the shape. Okay, you want to make sure you maintain the shape. So you're going to go in. Keep those layers going. You, you want to see stripes of ube? Stripes of ube. Now, I made the mistake of making this in a 9-inch spring form. Don't, because it's too small. This thing is going to grow. It's going to grow. So if it fits, just fits, don't despair because it's going to expand. So I'm just going to get this in here, and I'm just going to give it a little, little smush, like a little gentle smush, you know, like a gentle, don't squish it, just gentle. And now I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap, and I'm going to give it a one hour rise before we bake it. See you back. Beautiful, giant, ube, beautiful brioche roll is puffed up. Remember, it's not going to be as puffy as a regular yeast bread that's not totally full of delicious butter. So this is the richest type brioche. We're going to put this in a 350 degree oven for 35 minutes. And then if it gets really brown, you cover it with a little foil. Just make a little tent with foil and continue baking it for 15 to 25 until it looks done and you push down, it's nice and golden brown, and then you're ready to glaze it. Here we go. So my giant ube brioche bun just came out of the oven. It, oh, it is hot, it is slippery, and it came right out of the pan, so I took the sides off, and I slid it onto my serving platter. Now we're not done yet. Hold the phone, we need an ube glaze as purple as I am. And that's what we're about to make. So, one and a quarter cups of confectioner's sugar. We have a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. We're trying to hone the flavors in the ube and really make it come out. 
So this is one and a half teaspoons of ube extract, all right? And then about two to three tablespoons of water. Now you can use milk or cream, but I'm gonna use water because it's so beautiful, you don't really need it. You don't really need the milk or cream, but if you would like, splurge. Now get ready for some purple fun. Oh boy, can you see it? So we're gonna go easy on the water. I only added two tablespoons. If it's too thin, is no good, okay? I like it when it's a little bit thicker. If it's too thin, you're gonna end up having to add more uh, sugar when it's too thin. Too thick, you can always add more water. Okay, you see that? Oh, wow. Oh yeah, I like it, I like it. Now, it will spread the best on a warm, giant ube brioche bun. So the warmer your brioche bun, and try to get the sides off. So the bottom of my pan, it just slid right off. So this is no pan underneath it. So I'm just gonna go like this. I'm gonna take my whisk, and I'm just gonna drizzle, and then I'm going to move around with my offset spatula after it drizzles on. And you want to get that purple color. You may say, oh, wow, it looks like, you know, uh, Barney, <laughs> if you remember Barney. But this is what you want. This is ube. This is the essence of ube. It's going to taste like ube. It's going to smell like ube. You are going to get this luscious, luscious, all, all in ube giant ube brioche bun. And when you cut into it, get ready for purple, baby. It's gonna be purple all over the place. So if you want, you can just move it around. All right. All right, to get all that glaze everywhere. And it will be golden brown on top. It's supposed to be like this. Trust me on this. All right. Do you wanna see a slice? You want to see a slice? I think we ought to see a slice. I know the, the icing hasn't firmed up yet, but I really don't care because I need to have a piece of this beautiful giant ube brioche bun. All right, I happen to have my knife. So the uh, a serrated knife would work best. Do whatever you want. And now I'm going to cut into it. And this is going to be your go-to for brunch. I'm telling you, I'm going to cut a big piece. <sighs> okay, are you ready? Maybe a little warm inside. Oh, it's hot. Oh, I'm going to turn it around. Oh, you see the steam? It's a little hot, but I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. Isn't that a lovely thing? Oh, the essence of ube, it's got that lemony quality, that like citrus and the coconut, it's delicious. Yes, I would have waited a little bit longer if you weren't here um, because it really, you really want your icing to set, but don't wait. Have it for brunch, for the holidays, have it for brunch anytime. Please become a subscriber and make the ube brioche bun. Till next time.